Hello everyone, I'm Christopher Locke. I'm the IBPA Director of Membership and Member Services. And we are doing this webinar series called Get to Know Your IBPA Member Benefits. And that's gonna really be a great way for everyone to learn about all the great member benefits, but then kind of get a deeper dive. And today we're excited. We are talking with PR Newswire and they're gonna give awesome tips for landing media coverage. So to tell us about this, we have two amazing uh, members from Decision PR Newswire. They are both senior customer content specialists, Katarina Louis and Ariane Muldoon. Hello, thank you, take it away. Awesome, well, thank you, Christopher, and thank you everyone for joining us. So today we're going to show you how to use press release distribution to reach as many interested audiences as possible. We will also provide tips and best practices for creating quality content so you can get the attention of the media and consumers. In this webinar, I'll go over who we are as a company, Press Release 101 and best practices, and the benefits of using press release distribution. Ariane will talk about how to encourage earned media coverage, press release content ideas, and you'll discover tools that are available in the IBPA offer to help you accomplish your goals. So before I dive into stats and tips, um, I did, we wanted to give you a little background of who we are and what we do. Cision PR Newswire's ultimate goal is to help you sell your story by leveraging the power of press release distribution. Cision PR Newswire was founded in 1954 and has a 60 plus year history of being the best press release distribution network. We've been partners with IBPA for several years now, but this is our first webinar to discuss our partnership. So we're excited to help IBP members, IBPA members get the most out of this benefit. Our network reaches 4,000 websites, nearly 3,000 media outlets, and more than 550 news content systems. We also have a media-only community with 20,000 email subscribers. Cision PR Newswire works with companies in all industries and sizes. In the publishing industry, we've worked with household names like McGraw-Hill and Books A Million, as well as independently published authors. We also understand all the hard work that goes into writing and publishing a book. This webinar is to help you understand how to utilize our services so you can experience the fruits of your labor. So you may be wondering exactly why our company is talking to you today. Um, through our partnership with IBPA, we have numerous discounted offerings to help IBPA members get the word out about your books. We will dive deeper into the offer later in this webinar, but to summarize, here's what IBPA members have access to. Discounted web news release distribution services, uh, one free Cision influencer list, which is a direct email to journalists and influencers requesting certain industry content. There are hundreds of industry lists to choose from. Uh, discounted ProfNet services, which is a service that can match you with journalists looking for your expertise. And discounted multimedia services like images and videos to help your release stand out. So we understand that being an author doesn't necessarily mean you know how to write press releases. So we're gonna take a few minutes to talk about what a press release is, who reads them, the anatomy of press releases and more. When you Google, what is a press release? The first result says, a press release is a short, compelling news story written by a public relations professional and sent to targeted members of the media. The goal of a press release is to pique the interest of a journalist or publication. This is an antiquated definition since press releases can be seen and used by much more than journalists and they're sent out by a broad range of people, not just PR pros. Press releases inform an audience of a newsworthy event in an objective way, and topics can range from a new product or service to events, awards, certification, personnel changes, various financial disclosures like quarterly earnings, and softer seasonal content or blog post promotion. Here is an outline that breaks down the essential components of a press release. Your release should begin with a headline. The headline is the most important part of the press release as it tells the reader what you're announcing and sets the tone for the rest of the re release. 
If your headline is running really long, needs extra context, or you're announcing multiple connected things, consider adding a subheadline for those additional details. Once you have your headline, a good way to kind of double check it is to think about whether or not you would click into or share the release yourself. Next is the dateline. If you've ever read a newspaper, you'll notice that the body of the article always starts with a location. This is a necessary part of news articles. And since journalists require it, press releases require it too. A dateline location is using either, usually either a city or state or country of the company headquarters or the location of where a physical event would take place, like a book signing, for example. A date is also required so journalists and consumers can easily see when this news was sent out to gauge relevancy. After the dateline, we can move on to the body of the release, beginning with the lead sentence. The lead sentence is meant to elaborate more on the headline and keep readers wanting more. It may be tempting to start talking about your background, but that information can be pushed to the boilerplate. People have the attention span of like seven seconds. So starting strong is really important. The second most important part of a press release outside of the headline is the call to action. A call to action tells the reader what you want them to do next. Since it's so important, we recommend placing the call to action one to three times throughout the release to give readers multiple points of entry to your next step. For the rest of the body of the release, this is where you would continue to provide more details with supporting information like quotes and bulleted lists. If there's one thing journalists love, it's a good quote. Also, since time and attention spans are limited these days, paragraphs should be limited to about three to four sentences with headers to break up the text if possible. Finally, end the release with the company boilerplate and contact information. By the time you get to this section, your release should have naturally answered who, what, where, when, why, and how questions. The boilerplate is where you can summarize your background as an author, talk about other published books, and tout any awards or major accomplishments. While it may seem counterintuitive, this is where you would emphasize your credibility. So be sure to include contact information for the media, and we recommend including a full name, title, phone number, and email address. If a journalist wants to do a story on you but can't easily find a contact for questions, that is a quick way to get them to move on to something else. So now we know what the what of press releases, but let's dive into the why. Sending press releases out over a distribution network has numerous benefits. Press releases are a great way to reach new audiences and generate brand or book awareness. Depending on the news line selected, PR Newswire's network includes 4,000 plus websites and can target releases to reach trade publications in the publishing industry. People can't buy your book if they don't know about it. Press release distribution can send a release promoting your book out to over thousands of points, increasing awareness and possibly book sales. Press releases can also help create a relationship with the media. Journalists receive dozens of irrelevant pitches and press releases each week. Having a well-written press release that fits a journalist's desired audience will not go unnoticed and could lead to an interview or earned media article. Going along with reaching new audiences, press releases can boost SEO traffic. Having a high-ranking press release on Google and other search engines, it enhances the exposure to current and future customers. If you have a book about home improvement, imagine how much book sales might increase if a press release about your home improvement book comes up when users search how to renovate a home. A well-written press release can also help demonstrate thought leadership, which is imperative if you are a nonfiction author. Trust that authors are knowledgeable in their expertise is a major part of book buying decisions. For example, my husband heard an interview about how 70% of foods children are eating today are pr processed. The interview was very intriguing, and then the author's book was plugged at the end of the interview. So we bought the book. It turns out that only a couple paragraphs were actually about child nutrition. Most of the book was about how processed foods are the reason most people can't lose and keep off weight. But I read the book cover to cover, and guess what? The book was from 2016. So this is just one example how demonstrating thought leadership could have boosted sales of a five-year-old book. Going along with 
the trust that thought leadership brings, press releases also build credibility, as both media and consumers view press releases as a trusted source of data. Encouraging customer engagement is an important step in the customer and media journey, as those that engage with your content are more likely to buy or reach out for media interviews. A well-written press release can lead to social sharing on social and clicks on links and more. And last but not least, sending multiple press releases helps you curate a content portfolio, which furthers your, your credibility. If you've ever gone to a blog or a website and saw that they only have one or two things on there from like 2008, it doesn't really give the feeling of credibility and relevancy. So we've covered the who, what, and why of press releases. So now we're gonna move on to the how. In this section, I'm gonna provide tips and best practices for all things press releases. While press releases may help an author sell books, that shouldn't appear to be the primary goal. Press releases are meant to be objective and factual. And if sales happen, well, that's a perk. So here are some do's and don'ts of press releases. You do want to have a clear news angle. Journalists are working with less and less staff and they need to understand why this news is important to them quickly. Therefore, you don't wanna bury the lead. Journalists write in an inverted pyramid style. So writing the release in the same way helps them quickly gauge the importance of the story and makes their job easier. Plus, as I've mentioned, consumers have short attention spans. So having the most important information first will help them get engaged with the release and keep reading. You do want to write in third person as this gives the best feeling of objectivity. You don't want to write salesy or advertorial copy. Customer or consumers and media alike trust press releases more than advertisements. So writing a press release that is an advertisement will make readers feel betrayed. You do want to use at least 300 to 400 words, otherwise your content won't look credible. And you don't want to overdo it with hyperlinks, bolding, or hyperbole since these practice, practices get flagged by Google as low quality content and they get ranked lower. You do want to put your press release in a Word document since when sending over a news distribution service, specialists will need an editable document to tag different parts of the release for downstream sites and do formatting adjustments. You don't want to keyword stuff since this is an outdated practice and also gets flagged by search engines as low quality. And finally, you do want to take advantage of spell check to avoid any embarrassing mistakes, but you don't want to include a byline since press releases are not articles. They are in their own category. So moving on to some specific news release tips some of these will elaborate on the do's and don'ts just previously mentioned. The first tip is to incorporate action verbs in your headline. According to Cision's 2021 State of the Press Release Report, press releases with action verbs like show, rolls out, and reveal correlate with the most views on PRNewsWire.com. Announce and launch are the most used words in headlines, but they don't actually inspire very many views. You also wanna feature a clear call to action. It's important that you think about the goal of the press release and what you want readers to do next. Is the goal to drive readers to your website to learn more about your book? Ask them to go to your website. Uh, side note, if you use Google Analytics, you can make any call to action link trackable. So you can see how many websites visitors came from PR Newswire release. I provided the link to build trackable URLs in the slide. As for placement of the call to action, you wanna make sure it appears toward the beginning of the release and at the bottom. People read differently. Some skim through the whole release and others just read the first few paragraphs. The next tip is to use multimedia like images and videos in your release. In the next slide, I'll go over in more detail as to how multimedia can boost views and engagement. As I mentioned earlier, people read things differently online. So it's important to use disruptive formatting and natural language. You can break things out into bullet points or mark different sections of your release with bolded subheadings. It will break up the chunk release into chunks, making the release skimmable and more mobile friendly. You also wanna use natural language because it helps make your news have a broader appeal and it earns you uh, points with search engines like Google. 
Speaking of being mobile friendly, you also want to think about where most of the readers that view your release, where they'll be looking at it. And you want to tail your formatting for that audience. Uh, while most press release views are on desktops, mobile and tablet views are on the rise. So you want to ensure that sites that are displaying your release have responsive design. And finally, take advantage of social media. Share your press release and press release coverage in all of your social channels to gain a wider audience. Session PR Newswire has analyzed levels of engagement for press releases distributed through our network, and the findings are conclusive. Press releases with varying types of multimedia receive a lot more engagement. Adding one image can double your engagement. A video can triple it, and multiple images and videos can increase engagement by six times. If you're spending money to distribute a press release, adding an image is a no-brainer, especially with the discounts provided in the IBPA offer. So one of the main questions we often get about news releases is, when should I send it? Most like to send the releases Monday through Friday on the hour or half hour. But just because everyone else is doing it that way doesn't mean it's the best time for you. The first thing you want to think about is the goal of your release and who you want to reach. If your main goal is to get media coverage, journalists do tend to work mostly Monday through Friday during business hours. If your main goal is to get book interest from, say, I don't know, stay at home moms, maybe early evening could be best. The next thing to think about is day of the week. According to Cision's 2021 State of the Press Release Report, Tuesdays are the most popular day of the week to send news releases. This is most likely because studies have shown that Tuesdays are the most productive day of the week. But if you choose to send your release on Tuesday, your news is competing with almost everyone else's. So it might be best to avoid that day so your release has a better chance of standing out. Speaking of standing out, a great way to do that is to send a press release at an off minute. A majority of releases go out on the hour or half hour. So something as simple as sending it at 10.03 a.m. will help your news stand out in news feeds and it because it won't get pushed off the page as fast. And unless your news is stock market moving, you'll want to avoid sending out news around stock market open, which is 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Eastern time around there, and close 3 to 4.30 p.m. Eastern time. This is so that your news doesn't get lost in the avalanche of financial copy. And fi the final tending tip is to send more than one release. Each release should have a different angle, but sending multiple announcements helps keep your brand top of mind. A radio or TV commercial doesn't air just once, and news about your book shouldn't just be sent out once either. There are several ways to reframe news about books, which Ariane will dive into later. And before I hand it over to Ariane to go over how to encourage earned media, I want to highlight one last huge benefit of press release distribution, visibility reports. Visibility reports are a way to measure the success of your release, and they are broken out into four sections. The first one is pickup. Pickup is where you can see a sampling of exact match posting links on PR Newswire's syndicated network. When customers first use PR Newswire service, this is what they are most fascinated with. But as time goes on, it clicks that this is actually the least important of the four buckets. The next section is traffic. This is where you can see how many views your release received on PRNewsWire.com and the syndicated network. Average releases receive about 200 views, and you can also see how many views resulted from a search engine search. Moving on to audience, audience is where you can see how many journalists from PR Newswire for journalists viewed the release. If you're sending a release via web-only distribution, this won't be included. However, in some cases, you can see the registered name of the organization a viewer was looking at the release from. And finally, the most important indicator of success is engagement. Engagement means a reader was invested enough in your release to take an action of some kind. Engagement is where you can find the number of clicks, the links in your release received, as well as the number of times your release was shared on social media. 
So now I'll hand it over to Ariane to discuss what journalists want and how to encourage earned media. Thank you, Trina. So now that you're all experts on press release fundamentals, we're going to talk a little bit about the current media landscape and how that knowledge can help inform your press release strategy and hopefully help you get earned media. So if you're not familiar with this term, you've probably figured it out from the context clues already, but earned media coverage is simply material written about you or your business or your book that you haven't paid for, most commonly by a journalist. It can be challenging to get earned media since it's so coveted, there's a lot of competition. So while we can never guarantee that a particular journalist or publication will write about you, we can arm you with the best information to hopefully encourage that outcome. There we go. So every year, Cision puts together a state of the media report where we survey journalists from around the world to get their opinions on PR, the media industry, and what their biggest challenges are. We've been doing this report for about 12 consecutive years now, so we've been able to track trends and best practices over time. So why is this important? Well, because when a journalist is making decisions about what articles they're going to write, you have an opportunity to be part of that process if you know how they work. After all, most journalists don't write articles as favors and they're not at a loss for ideas. So to get on their professional radar, you need to understand a little bit about their world. So the state of the media report helps to paint that picture for you. So here you'll see some key takeaways from that report. And there's one main theme that I'd like to highlight, which Trina touched on as well, which is making a journalist's life easier. What does that mean? So it basically means doing your homework and being prepared, having a strong press release that's newsworthy and full of good information, having supplemental information handy like high res images of your book cover, um, being open to and ready for interviews and researching the journalists that you want to write about your book. You don't want to be in the 99% uh, the of people emailing the one journalist here with the thumbs down icon. You want to be in the 1% that contacts the journalist with something relevant to what they write about for their audience. So with that in mind, what stories do journalists want to write about? Here we pulled out some specifics from the report. Unsurprisingly, COVID-19 is still touching headlines, even if it's in more of a reactionary way, such as stories about how businesses are pivoting to serve customers post COVID-19, practical stories to help families face another challenging year, and hyper-local community news. After looking at these, you may be thinking, you know, my books were published 10 years ago and they don't connect to any of this stuff. The thing is, these examples are speaking to larger trends. So for instance, your story doesn't have to be about COVID-19 or racial issues, but can it be connected to another current event or a contemporary trend? Do you write feel-good tales or how-to manuals that can help people feel a little more in control of their world? Journalists and bloggers are always looking for consumer interest stories and products that entertain or teach. So if you're trying to sell books, that's always going to be right up their alley. Regardless of the specific subject of the book, there's an audience out there that it will appeal to. So the takeaway here is not to try and, you know, shoehorn your book, um, you know, to fit just any particular trend. It's to step back and look at your book through the lens of a journalist and see where some new opportunities may be. So how does a journalist find your press release? If you distribute it over a wire service like PR Newswire, that helps them find it, whether online or in their internal feeds and newsrooms. As Trina mentioned earlier, if you are promoting the release on social media, reporters are looking there for news as well. But there's another tactic that you can use, which we've sort of been hinting at, which is pitching. 
So if you're not familiar with pitching, it's simply reaching out to a journalist to get them interested in your story, which would ideally result in them writing an original piece featuring you or your book. So the first and arguably most important step in the pitching process is to understand who you are pitching and why. Take the time to research an outlet and the specific writer you're going to pitch to ensure that your message aligns with their beat. Only 1% of reporters consider the vast majority of the pitches they receive to be relevant. Mass sending a generic email is just a waste of your time and theirs. So that's one thing that you definitely want to avoid. So for the pitch itself, provide key information, but be succinct. Include specifics about who, what, when, where, and why, along with links to further information, such as a press release that features quotes or multimedia. Demonstrating knowledge of the journalist's work is a nice touch as well. Again, if you can tap into a current trend or have a feel-good story, that'll give you bonus points because journalists are looking for on-topic positive news right now. So once you hit uh, send on your email, you'll probably be you know, anxiously awaiting a reply back. The truth is that a quarter of journalists receive over 100 pitches per week, and everyone has different preferences on how they want to be followed up with, if at all. So a good rule of thumb is to send a note a few days to a week later and then move on. You can always try with a different story angle at another time. If you're stuck on who to pitch, you can try tools like help a reporter out or use social media in your research. However, for as much value as we place on earned media, it's not the only source of authority. If pitches aren't working out, continue to publish press releases or blog posts on social media so that you're staying visible to and connected with your audience. As your brand and content portfolio grow, hope, hopefully will, so will your media attention. So since many of us are still working from home, um, be sure to offer flexible interviews and be prepared for virtual appointments. Journalists have reported being frustrated that they can't reach someone or that if they do, the person can't deliver on what was promised in their pitch because they were unprepared. So you don't want to lose out on an opportunity just because you simply weren't ready. Okay, so if you've never pitched a journalist before, it can be a little intimidating. There really is no perfect pitch. Uh, we get asked that a lot, but there are helpful guidelines and templates that you can find online. So we wanted to take a moment to share some with you. So the screenshot here is an example that I took from the first link down in the resources section. So this is the type of pitch that that person would like to receive. So looking over it quickly, are there any edits that you would make or is there anything in particular that jumps out at you? You wanna try and read it from the perspective of a journalist rather than the writer. So when I look at this, I like that the person is upfront about who they are and what their news is. They include specifics, they provide multimedia and they differentiate themselves from competitors. They also add a timely factor by mentioning that there is a launch next week. However, they don't demonstrate a knowledge of the journalist's previous work or familiarity with the publication, and there's really no mention of how the product would benefit the readers. Lastly, there's a line about first refusal. So I'd personally be judicious with any potential exclusivity or first refusal offers. While no one wants to write in a story that's already been written, you can get into dicey territory with the rules of media exclusives. Um, first refusal also signals that you may have contacted other publications that turned you down and that you just want coverage. It sort of just takes away from the personalization of the pitch. Remember, each journalist is going to have individual quirks and preferences, but the basics are fairly uniform across the board. Journalists really just want a pitch that makes them go, wow, this person has read my work, they understand what I write about, and they're telling me about something that my readers would be interested in. So I've included a few links at the bottom here to some other helpful pitching resources from a variety of sites. So if you haven't done much pitching before or want to reevaluate your strategy, these are good places to start. Hmm. 
Okay, so as we've been talking, hopefully you've been getting excited about how you can position your book in a way that would appeal to consumers and the media. But if you're, you know, still a little fuzzy on what your newsworthy hook is going to be, that is perfectly okay. Um, we're going to take some time to dive into a few different ideas and examples that are specific to the publishing industry. Okay, so there's three main buckets that your press release will probably fall into. New book, events and milestones, or current trends and timely topics. Your release might fall squarely into one of these or overlap across all three. So if you have a new book, that's an easy one. You can use the press release to tell everyone what the book is about, when it's being released, and where they can purchase it. Unsurprisingly, this is one of the most popular press release types since consumers and journalists are always looking for the latest products. But what do you do if your next book isn't coming out for a while or your most recent book is five years old? There is still plenty to talk about. So are you doing any sort of event, a speaking engagement at a conference, a podcast appearance, or even something like a local author signing would all be considered newsworthy topics that you could use to drum up business. So similar to that, if your book makes it on a bestseller list, you win any kind of award or you reach a milestone, like the 10 year anniversary of your first book's publication, those are all perfect occasions to send a press release for. Now, let's say none of those scenarios apply to you. Not to worry, you still have options. Think about how you can connect your book to a contemporary theme or trend, whether that's a holiday or a larger societal issue. Now, this one may require a bit more creativity than the other categories, but when you find something that clicks, it'll make for a very compelling piece of news. So depending on your situation, one of these groups probably stands out as the best fit. If you're struggling or want to see even more specifics, we've linked a real-time feed of all the book-related releases coming out of PR Newswire for your reference. This can also be helpful if you want to see some real-life examples of how your peers format and structure their releases as well. So we highly recommend checking it out. Okay, so speaking of real life examples, here are three recent press releases that we pulled from PRNewsWire.com that showcase all of the ideas we just went over. So the first one here is announcing that a CEO and author has written a new version of one of his books, which has also made it to the Amazon bestseller list. This is a practical how-to book about finance, which is always a relevant topic that also happens to connect to his business. So this release follows a lot of our best practices, including a call to action link of where to buy the book, an image of the cover, and quotes. Then next up in the center, we have an example of a science fiction book, which is a volume of five shorts featuring Black women as the heroines. The release includes an image of the cover, a quote from critics, information on where to buy the book, and a link promoting the author's website. Even though this is clearly a new book release, the way it's being presented also focuses on the theme of Black feminism, which of course connects to the diversity conversation. So this shows you how you can tap into multiple newsworthy categories. And then finally, the third example here features a children's book. So from the headline, this looks like it could just be, you know, another new book announcement. However, the first paragraph explains that a special collector's edition of the book was given to 150 children in a Florida hospital who were also treated to an exclusive reading featuring the book's main characters streamed into their rooms. Again, this release features an image of the cover, quotes, and links to more information. You can find all three of these releases on PRNewsWire.com if you want to read them more in depth, but hopefully these summaries have given you a few ideas on how to sell your story. So now that we've armed you with all sorts of information about how to put together a newsworthy press release, we wanna make sure you know how to take advantage of our partnership with IBPA and all the exclusive goodies that are available to you. 
Okay, so as an IBPA member, you are eligible to receive a suite of discounted services from PR Newswire. We offer a lot of different communications tools, but our core product is press release distribution, where we take your release and disseminate it to thousands of points so that consumers and reporters alike can find your news. So Cision PR Newswire is a membership-based organization uh, that helps to keep the news that we issue high quality. So the first perk is that you get a free one-year membership, which is normally $249 annually. And then you get a discounted $99 fee per year for any subsequent years that you choose to remain a member for. So as another benefit, we give you about 50% off of our ProfNet service. I'll actually be going over this service a bit more shortly, uh, but this is a platform that connects journalists with experts in specific subjects to help write their stories and in turn potentially feature you in some earned media articles. You also get a free micro list on your first release. What is a micro list or as we call them, a Cision influencer list? So a micro list is an email list of journalists and bloggers that are interested in a niche topic. Um, micro lists, they're, are, they're supplemental add-ons to a wire distribution, meaning this is an optional list that you can tack on to the news line you choose. So as an example, we have a publishing micro list that reaches over 1,100 journalists directly via email, and it's normally $650. So if you add this on to your first release, you'll get it for free, and your release will be delivered via email directly to those 1,100 journalists, in addition to the places that you'll reach with the news line that you select, which brings me to the next benefit. So perhaps the most important perk is access to discounted distribution options. So when you're ready to send out a release, you first need to pick where it's going to go. PR Newswire literally has hundreds of newsline options to choose from. Um, they're categorized by geography and then whether the release is going online only or if it will also reach traditional media newsrooms. Choosing a distribution can be overwhelming, which is why we have a few pre-selected discounted options for you. I'm going to be talking about one of these options in more depth momentarily so that you can get a better sense of how it works. Now, I do want to mention that if you become a PR Newswire member, part of your membership includes account management support. So you can always talk with your rep to figure out what news lines make the most sense for you. And depending on how many press releases you need, they can figure out a package tailored to you with custom pricing as well. So last but not least, I want to talk about our multimedia offer as well. So as you've probably gathered from the presentation so far, visual elements are so important in your press release. Now, the base price for press release distribution is for a text only announcement, and we have options to add on either a photo or video. For IBPA members, we give you about 50% off. So instead of paying the $395 rate card price that you see here, you'll pay around 195. So we understand that you're on a budget. So we really hope that these discounts make promoting your story a little bit easier. So I wanted to take a few moments to talk about our online only distribution. So as I mentioned, while we have hundreds of distributions to choose from, our WebMax or web news release option is super popular for IBPA members. So I wanted to share some specifics about that with you. So what does online only mean? It means that this distribution sends your release to online points only. It does not go to financial disclosure points or traditional media newsrooms. By traditional media, we mean TV stations, radio stations, magazines, and other trade publications, newspapers, etc. So selecting this option will not send your news to the Associated Press, for example, but you can still reach some major media websites. So where exactly does your release go if you choose the web news release, and why is this a good option for you? So this option will send your release to about 1,800 sites in the US, including Yahoo Finance, Apple News, and CNBC. 
Because your news will be syndicated and indexed online, it is also discoverable on search engines like Google and Google News, of course. So the recipient points on this list were curated for business to consumer reach. So we recommend online only options as affordable, effective ways to reach consumers. Journalists monitor a lot more than just their internal newsroom feeds though. So rest assured that the media we talked about during this presentation will still be able to find your news. Plus, if you take advantage of that free microlist offer, you can add a layer of media specific targeting as well. An online only distribution like this will ultimately help you reach new audiences and boost your SEO, but the rep you speak with can consult with you on what option makes the most sense. We have state and local news lines all the way up to national and even international. We even have um, some multicultural options that can translate your news into Spanish for the Hispanic demographic here in the US. So don't be afraid to explore and experiment. Uh, just make sure you consult with your rep first to get those full news line details and pricing information. So next up, I wanted to share a little more detail with you about ProfNet, because this is another avenue that you can use to help generate earned media, even when you don't have a press release to distribute. So as an author, you most likely have expertise in something, whether it's writing or the subject matter that you write about. When journalists are writing articles, they often need expert sources to consult, interview and quote to give their piece more depth and credibility. ProfNet is a service that connects those journalists with potential experts like you. So how it works is there is a community of journalists registered on the ProfNet site and they can send out expert queries of what they're looking for. If you register with ProfNet as an expert, you can see those journalist queries, assess if you're a good fit for what they're seeking and then respond directly to them. Now, you know, there's always, there's no guarantee, but if you're a good match, you could end up being featured in an editorial piece, giving more notoriety to your name. So this service starts at $650 annually rate card, but with your IBPA membership, you get about 50% off of that. Now, I also wanted to mention that we have a similar service available that has a free version called Harrow or Help a Reporter Out, which I briefly mentioned earlier. So this option is a bit broader and doesn't have quite as much vetting as ProfNet does, but it's a budget-friendly way to try this type of service out. So if you're interested in learning more about these options, we'll have informational links on the next slide, but you can always talk with your account manager as well. Okay, so we wanted to wrap up by making sure you had links to everything we talked about today in addition to our contact information. Please feel free to reach out to Trina and myself at vpo at .com if you have any questions after the webinar that we don't touch on in the Q&A. We're generally in the office Monday through Friday uh, from about 8 a.m. till 5.30 p.m. and we're in Eastern time and we would love to help you. Um, once you become a PR Newswire member, you can reach out to your rep or their customer support line at any time as well. They have 24-7 support. We know that press release writing and distribution can be overwhelming and complicated, especially if you've never done it before. So someone will always be able to help you. And then with that, I will hand things back over to Chris for the Q&A. That was incredible. That was so much great information. Uh, I took notes. I mean, I, one thing I love about my job is I'm also an author publisher, so I get to learn. Um, but I, I'm telling you, that was so much great information. So I'll probably have to watch this again as some of these people are. And just so everyone here knows, uh, about sometime during the end of this week, I will be sending you a recording of this webinar. I'll also, they were very kind to give a copy of the slides. So I'll also be sending you the slides. So don't worry if you didn't write everything down, it's fine. Uh, so you'll get all that information, but we do have some questions. So let's just jump right to it. Okay, uh, the first question is, uh, do you have any more suggestions for finding reporters to potentially pitch to? Yes, we actually have, um 
a guide that we could follow up and um, send with you because it can be hard. Like if you don't already, you know, have a relationship with any journalists and you maybe don't have like an email list or anything or like where, where do I even start? Um, a good place to start, just a rule of thumb is, you know, if you do any reading in any particular publications or newspapers or anything, um, just about like the publishing industry, or you've seen articles about books that, you know, have like really resonated with you and, and you like that journalist's work, that's, that's one of the easiest places to start. You would just look for their byline, see who wrote it and add them to your list for someone to reach out to. Awesome. And then I know you'll hit on this a bit, but how often do you suggest sending a news release? So I can hop in on that one. Um, basically, you, I mean, you don't want to overdo it um, and you don't want to, you want to just make sure you have newsworthy announcements. So, I mean, there's companies that can send like multiple releases a week because they just have that much news coming out. Um, but, you know, in terms of you know, book publishing industry and stuff, you might not have that many and that's okay. I would say minimum three releases a year. Hopefully you'd have enough news to, to cover that and be able to um, get your name out there and get multiple touch points throughout the year. And as a question, when you're a member of the uh, PR Newswire, Citizen PR Newswire, um, like each time there's a, a cost for each list like that goes out right like you're, you're a member but you don't get like a free you know send for a press release like once a year or something like that right right yeah it would be a cost each time you send a release as well the membership is just kind of to gain access to the portal and the account management and things like that and then each release does have a, a separate cost as well okay cool Okay, uh, someone asks, can you discuss the benefits of sending something via PR Newswire versus sending the same press release to a media list via Cision's email tool? Both offer the tracking software, so they'd love to hear which you suggest using. Yeah, I can take that one. So um, to be perfectly candid, Trina and I are you know, more legacy PR Newswire side. So that's really where our expertise is. We do have you know, some familiarity with those decision communications tools. I would say the biggest difference is with that tool, you're directly um, emailing journalists, which is great and definitely has value. Um, but part of the benefit to distributing a press release through PR Newswire is that it gets syndicated online. So if you're doing something direct via email, it doesn't get that exposure online and it's only going to the people that you pick. When you send out a release over PR Newswire, you know, it's going to the thousands of points that we send to that are public, that anyone can find. And then it also gives it some longevity. I, you know, you can find press releases that people issued many years ago online still, and even PR Newswire search goes back for a while. And the reports that we have for the PR Newswire press releases continue to update. They continue to track engagement with your release over time as well. So there's just a, another element of discoverability, I would say, with issuing your release through PR Newswire versus just the email tool. Awesome. And uh, someone's asking, um, how are we supposed to use responsive web design with a Word document? So I can kind of jump into that. So basically, like if you distribute your release through PR Newswire, all of, you know, PRNewswire.com itself, its site is responsive. So basically they take your Word document and they, when they process it, it turns it into an HTML document that's formatted and friendly for all of PRNewswire.com and all the downstream recipients. So each downstream recipient takes our content and uses it in the way that fits their website format. Um, I would say most of our downstream recipients are also responsive design. There's very few credible websites out there that don't incorporate responsive design. That's so I'm glad you all are here because I have no idea what a responsive web design means. I was like, oh, I hope they know what this means. And you do, because you're experts. Okay, great. <laughs> Uh, all right, what is the impact of the date on a press release? Um, so they're talking about like the shelf life of like like the book, like when it was published and all that. Can you all talk about, um, you know, like like uh, that concept? So the date 
mainly for press releases is like if you're you know you're searching something on google and a release comes up about a book like depending on what it is it's going to be relevant if you search for example the example i gave a home improvement book um you're you know you're searching for home improvement and you see this home improvement book chances are that's still going to be relevant even though the dates on it is from five years ago you know now, if it's a home improvement design book, they might be like, I don't know if the designs are going to be, you know, up to par since this is five years old. But if it's just like basic home improvement, like that's something that has a long shelf life. So depending on, you know, what the topic of your release is, the date just helps people kind of put the context around when the book came out, but it doesn't necessarily scare them away from buying the book um, or, or looking at it and looking more into it. Um, I don't know if you had anything else to add, Arianne, but that's, that's all. Yeah, I think I would just say that, you know, if someone's reading a release, whether it's a journalist or a consumer, you know, they're paying attention to the date just to, you know, sort of like see when it came out. Because um, if it came out a while ago, it could be like, oh, you know, I wonder if this person has done anything else new. Um, so it could sort of prompt them to check out, you know, your website or any, you know, links that you have in the release and see what you've been up to recently or if you've issued other news. Um, the date on the release is just good. It's just a good uh, point of reference for whoever is reading it. Great. Uh, and does your service include multicultural and diverse media outlets? Yes. Um, we have, so we have a lot of news lines, as I mentioned, um, you know, we have ones that are just for like state and local all the way up to national, um, and they include all sorts of outlets. We do have news lines that are dedicated specifically to the multicultural market, um, which we could share with you if you'd like more information on those. But as an example of that, um, we have like some select states where we offer a Hispanic option. So it's where you could, you know, pick a state. I, I believe Florida is one of them where you could send your release to that market. It would go out um, in English to all the normal places, the typical places that we send to in Florida as part of our standard distribution. Then it would also be translated into Spanish and it would be sent to publications that, you know, specifically request Spanish news in Florida. So we do have um, some multicultural and diverse options. Great, thank you. And when you refer to journalists, do you mean for newspapers or magazines or are there other media channels that you're including? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think when we used to use that term, it was, you know, just, we were thinking of like typical reporters at, you know, TV and um, radio stations, newspapers, that sort of thing. It has expanded um, to also include bloggers and even some influencers. Um, but primarily, yes, it will be media that works for everything from, you know, a, an industry trade publication to a local radio station, all the way up to, you know, a very well-known publication or outlet like ABC or the New York Times. Great. Uh, so someone is asking, what pretext can you think of that could justify a news release about a three to four-year-old book other than there's some relevancy to a recent event or trend? So I think that's kind of a challenging one if we don't know the specifics about the book, but that's actually something that Trina and I would be happy to help with. So if you are struggling with ideas um, and you can share, you know, just like a link to more information about your book or anything like that, you can send that to us and just be like, I don't really know what the angle can be for this. Like I want to promote it, but I'm struggling please feel free to send that to us and we would be happy to take a look and give you some personalized recommendations. Great. Uh, what help does PR Newswire provide with editing or formatting a press release? I could take that one. So PR Newswire will um, get your release and they will do um, a quick you know, read through. They do run spell check. Um, in terms of formatting, they just format the release by putting tags around certain things so that when the release feeds to the downstream sites, everything appears in the correct place on that downstream site. Um, so, the, and they think, you know, for headlines, they take, if it's all caps, they do put it in like title case. 
um, and things like that. But for the most part, they'll read the release. They check for like date date discrepancies. So, you know, if you say Saturday, November 3rd, and it's actually November 4th is the Saturday, they will look at that and call you and say, well, which, which is it? Is it Saturday, November 4th or, you know, and, and get that from you. Um, they do look, um, you know, like I said, for spelling and, and grammar, um, moving commas inside quotes is a big one, um, things like that. So they, they do take a look at the release and you know if they do have a big question, they will call you um, to make sure before they make any big changes. Great, uh, how much lead time do you need and how does that tie into the press release special offer for the media add-ons? Uh, so for example, um, they have like for 2022 books coming out. So I think mm -hmm. they're wondering like, would they do that now or would they need to do that later? So I think, Arian, would you say they just would sign up in the next week and then they can use that free photo whenever they decide to send the release, right? Yes, yeah. Um, as long as you sign up within the next week, um, there's no rush on actually, you know, sending your press release. Um, you'll basically just like get those offers uh, sort of like attached to your account. Um, and then, you know, if you, if you need more time to strategize or anything, that's something that you could also um, talk to Trina and I about. Um, if you want to share some specific details with us, then we can give you a recommendation because, um, you know, with holidays and everything coming up, you know, there's certain times that you maybe want to avoid sending a release versus sending one. So we'd be happy to um, help guide you on that. And that also prompted um, another thought. I know this wasn't the specific question, but there also is a turnaround time component once you actually submit your release to PR Newswire that you'll just wanna keep in mind. So say you have your press release ready to go, you wanna send it out. Um, you know, PR Newswire can have very high volume. Um, it does take time for the editors to work on your release and prepare it for being distributed over the wire, as Trina was just talking about with all the proofreading and everything that they do. Um, so we recommend sending your release to PR Newswire a day or two in advance of when you would like it to actually be distributed if possible. Um, there always is an option to, you know, send the release as soon as possible, but as a best practice that we talked about earlier, you know, you really do want control over the timing of your release. So if you can have it ready a couple of days in advance for when you would like it to go out, that would be perfect. Okay. And this may be the last question. Uh, most Indies have a limited PR budget. So they're wondering, I know on our page, the IBPA page, it lists some of your costs. Um, mm -hmm. I think they're just kind of see if maybe on your website, you have a page that lists like all the costs. Um, is there a page? You're welcome to put it in the, the chat um, so that people can see kind of a, a bigger rundown of all the costs. I don't think that we have a public link with our pricing currently, um, but we do have a PDF that we would be able to share of our full pricing guide as follow up. Okay, uh, maybe you all can send that to me. Um, yes, yeah, I think that would be helpful. Okay, cool. And uh, again, I will be sending an email um, sometime by the end of this week with this recording, um, that guide, things like that. So, um, you know, uh, it'll, it'll all come eventually. Uh, it looks like we might have uh, one other question. Um, does the IBPM membership give the free micro or influencer list? Um, does IBPA membership include Harrow for free? Those are two separate questions. So um, the offer does include one free micro list. That is correct. Um, the pricing on that varies, but the, the maximum price of a micro list is $650. And you are welcome to pick one at the maximum price and get that one for free. Um, in terms of Harrow, that is not connected with the IBPA member benefits specifically, um, the service that we have connected to it is ProfNet. Um, you get a percentage off of that because that one's a little bit more expensive than Harrow, but Harrow you can sign up for on your own. Um, and I believe that that does have a free version that you can just um, be able to try it on your own. Great. Uh, again, this was 
so much great information at just the webinar, um, but what you all provide for IBPA members and just indie publishers in general is excellent. So I just want to thank you all for spending your time. I mean, this was this was great. So thank you. Yeah, and thank you. I'm going to stop record, um, but then we won't all suddenly disappear, but uh, just let me know. So thanks again. Thanks everyone for coming and we really appreciate it.